Hello Aluxers, welcome back. We've prepared an in-depth and fascinating deep dive into the largest hospitality company in the world, Marriott International. It's crazy to imagine that more than 1 in 15 hotel beds in the world fall under Marriott's care. That's millions of turndowns, pillow fluffing and check-ins every day. And yet, despite these massive numbers, they boast happy customers and repeat guests all around the world. So how does such a large brand keep its customers so happy? Well, that's what we're about to uncover. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Pack your bags because we're going to explore the Marriott Hotel Group. Here we go. Number one, the man behind the brand was a simple Utah guy. John Willard Marriott, or JW Marriott, is the man behind the brand. He was born September 17, 1900 in Ogden, Utah. He grew up on the Marriott settlement and in 1923 graduated from Weber College. He went on to the University of Utah and later graduated in 1926. We won't go into the logistics of how the company formed just yet, but despite his wild success, he remained actively involved in each property. On August 13, 1985, J.W. Marriott went on to the big hotel in the sky. But during his time on Earth, he was a saint to work for. Even though he saw his business grow to 1,400 hotels and 143 resorts while he was still alive, he made sure he visited each establishment several times a year. He knew his staff and made sure they knew they were cared for and made sure their needs were met. It was this personal care that secured the Marriott Group $4.5 billion in annual revenue before 1985. Number 2. He started small and built from there. In 1927, J.W. and his wife Alice S. Marriott opened a root beer stand in Washington, D.C. This small nine-stool beer stand, a franchise of the A&W root beer brand, was the start of his business success. Alice had learned how to make some great Mexican food from women at her previous job, so she started making chili and tamales in her kitchen at home and would bring them to the root beer stand to sell to customers. This was a hit, so they opened Hot Shop that soon became a popular restaurant brand. Marriott then started a drive-in and the brand kept expanding even beyond the borders of D.C. New locations were opened and he was given the management of food services to government buildings, including the U.S. Treasury. Number 3. Humble to this day and virtually off the grid Even though Marriott International is the world's largest luxury brand with over 6,700 properties spread over 130 countries and territories, the family has remained humble to their roots of home-cooked meals and customer-centered service. Bill Marriott went on to succeed his father as leader of the Marriott Group and until his handover to the current CEO, Bill remained hands-on with the staff members in the company. He isn't big on technology, but he's an avid letter writer. He was known to write more than 700 letters a year by hand to members of the Marriott team. He would congratulate them on career or family milestones or commend them on a job well done. Number 4. Bill Marriott dabbled with blogging once. But he wasn't the most tech-savvy CEO. The group decided they needed to give Bill a more digital presence, so they included a blog written by him on the company's website. To this day, the most popular post on the website is one that Bill Marriott wrote about his beloved family dog, Murphy, a golden retriever. Number 5. There was a natural progression from food into hospitality. In the 1950s, having made a big success from food services, the Marriott started two motels. The first was called Quality Inn, located near the airport. The second was near Twin Bridge Motor Hotel, which opened in 1957. Bridges would prove very central to Marriott's business decisions, but more on that later. Number 6. They were on the internet first. When the internet hit households, Marriott was ready to make the move to reservations online. They were the first hotel chain in the world to accept online reservations for a hotel room, a move that set them on the path to global domination that they have today, with control of over 1.1 million hotel beds daily. Number 7. Coronavirus hit them hard and first. Biogen, a Cambridge-based biotech company, hosted their leadership conference at the Marriott Long Wharf in Boston on the 26th and 27th of February 2020. 
The conference attracted Biogen executives who had traveled from all over the world to attend. Little did they realize that the coronavirus was on the move and spreading through the delegates rapidly during those two days. This conference was the source of dozens of cases of COVID-19. On March 11, 2020, one of the hotel staff tested positive for the virus, and the Marriott Group decided to close the hotel in the interest of safety and public health. Number 8. They've always been one of the top places to work. Bill Marriott summarized the company values around their staff best when he said, We have over 600,000 hourly workers around the world, and they are supporting families of one, two, and three people or more. I think that's the key to this, really taking good care of people and providing them opportunities to grow and develop and provide better for themselves and their families. And that's the legacy I'd like to be remembered for. And these words are not just lip service. They've been ranked as one of the world's best places to work and a great place to work for women on numerous barometers and for many consecutive years. They've been an equal opportunity employer long before it was a buzzword. They also made Fortune magazine's list of most admired companies. Number 9. Massive expansion seems to be in the family DNA. From two motels and a root beer stand, the Marriott family have driven a steady upward curve. They now have 30 brands in their stable, including some of the most recognizable hotel brands in the world, spanning from budget to luxury hospitality. They're most commonly connected with upscale brands, such as JW Marriott and Ritz Carlton. But you might not realize they also own Courtyard, Residence Inn, Fairfield Inn & Suites, Weston, W Hotels, Sheridan, Renaissance and Le Meridian Hotels, just to name a few. Number 10. They started at the bottom, now they dominate the market. In September 2016, Marriott International closed a massive deal. They put $13 billion on the table to acquire Starwood Hotels and Resorts worldwide. This move brought some of the most well-known hotel brands like Courtyard and Ritz-Carlton together with Sheridan, Weston and St. Regis. On top of boosting their portfolio to 30 hotel brands, it also upped their footprint to over 5,800 properties at that time, totaling 1.1 million rooms. Number 11. Their merger took them leagues ahead of the competition in the luxury market. This major merger was a complete washout for the competition. The combined total of owning 1.1 million hotel rooms was unimaginable until this point. The nearest competitor was Hilton Worldwide, with a total of 773,000 rooms, in a close race with third place Intercontinental Hotels Group with 766,000 rooms. Even if you zoom in on only the luxury brands they own, Marriott still takes the biggest slice of the pie with their seven luxury brands, making up 371 properties. This is a 6.1% market share of all luxury hotels in the world. Intercontinental Hotels Group previously held the spot with 248 luxury hotels and Hilton Worldwide trailing behind with only 51 luxury properties. And hey Luxers, if you want to find out some more about the Hilton family fortune, be sure to click in the top right corner to watch our video all about that famous hotelier. Number 12. Bridges connect them to the world. So we told you the Marriott family have a strong connection to Bridges, and it was no coincidence the first two hotels that John Marriott opened were next to Bridges. The Twin Bridges Motor Hotel and the Key Bridge Marriott were both next to Bridges over the Potomac River. The reason John Marriott chose to position his hotel next to Bridges was, according to him, they'll never move. And well, he had a point. Number 13. Rewards Program Marriott has always had a good reputation for retaining their customers, and since their merger with Starwood, this hasn't changed. They've actually been able to extend their reward points offering. The Starwoods Rewards program allows guests to transfer their points to airline frequent flyer programs. This allows you to accumulate bonus miles. With this new program, for 60,000 Marriott Reward points, a guest will receive 25,000 airline miles. Number 14. Bill Marriott passed on a deal that continued to haunt him. In the 1960s, Marriott was offered the building that is now the Hyatt Regency in downtown Atlanta. It was a strange arrangement for the time, with the rooms facing a huge atrium lobby. 
As Marriott explains, no one had seen an atrium at the time and they wanted $16 million for it. Hyatt came in and bought it, and soon after, they were building atrium hotels all over America. In 1983, Bill Marriott was ready when he was offered a property on Times Square by the New York mayor, Ed Koch. At this point, Times Square was in bad shape, but Marriott wasn't going to let this one go to a competitor. Now, the Marriott Marquis property is a proud part of Times Square since its drastic turnaround. Number 15. They experienced a data breach that measured in the millions. Checking into a hotel is nerve-wracking. You're just handing your sensitive information to a total stranger in a pretty open public space. You often even lose sight of your passport or ID as they take it to some back room to make a copy. The Marriott always took the responsibility of their guests' information very seriously. But on September 8, 2018, this didn't go according to plan. It's a day the company probably wishes never happened. On this day, it became clear that hackers had breached their Starwood reservation system. The breach exposed a potential data leak of 500 million guests' personal information. The leak had been slow and begun in 2014. In the end, it went down as the second largest theft of personal records in history to date, second only to the giant breach of Yahoo in 2013, when 3 billion users' personal information was leaked. And Aluxers, that's all for today on Marriott Hotels. But before you go, answer us this. What's your most memorable Marriott experience? We'd love to hear from you in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, what does that mean? We owe you a bonus or something? Here it is. Marriott doesn't stop at mundane. They're reaching for the sky. The JW Marriott Marquis in Dubai is an amazing building. It's the second tallest building in the world, just off the mark of the Burj Khalifa. The marquee reaches 355 meters high, has 72 floors, and a total of 1,608 rooms on offer. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.